We made it to week 3 of our Zelda tutorial project and this time something beautiful happened during our livestream. I was well on my way to implement a method to interact with objects in our scene, like the chest or the sign. And when I hit a small roadblock in my design idea, this happened. So, um, here's a, a, good, a very good question. Okay, this snack brings up a major question I was waiting until the end to ask. Why have you chosen to register all the interactables with the player? Why not sphere-cast all to get interactable objects in the local area? Um, very good question. Um, so, um, 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 I actually like your method better. <laughs> better. <laughs> the suggested technique is very simple. Since we are trying to interact with our environment, we first need to know which interactable objects are close to us. Alucard J suggests to use an overlap cast. This is a method provided by Unity, utilizing the physics engine to receive information about a specific area. You simply create an overlap shape and the physics engine will deliver all colliders that are touched by that shape. This shape can be a box, a circle or a point and the technique can be used for all sorts of different things. For example, we can use it to select multiple units with a box in a strategy game, we can find out which objects are affected by a circular explosion or we can get a list of all objects at the position the user clicks at. In our case we are going to use the method overlap area all, meaning we overlap a box over our scene and receive all colliders that touch it. Because we only want to interact with objects that are very close by, we simply make the overlap area just a little bit bigger than our character's collider. Now that we have a list of colliders, we have to find out if there are any objects we can interact with, and in case there are multiple ones, which one we prefer. Again, there are multiple different methods to achieve this, but I chose to create a new component called Interactable Base. We can attach this component to every object that we want to interact with and then search our list of colliders for objects that have this component attached. All the objects that don't have the component can be discarded. Finally, we measure the angle between where our character is facing and the direction to the object. By using the angle, we can make sure that we only interact with objects that are in front of us. And in case we have multiple possible interactables close to us, we can also search for the object that has the lowest angle to choose which object we actually want to interact with. And this is where we stand after week 3. It's a very good jumping off point for next week, because now that we've found the object we want to interact with, we can start implementing how we are interacting with it. Since we have a sign to read, a chest to loot and a sword to grab, we have tons of interesting stuff to explore when we meet again next Saturday on twitch.tv slash letscodegames. You can get the full source and all the assets we used in this project for free in our git repository. The link to it is down below. If you like this tutorial and want to support us so we can do more, simply share the video and tell your friends about the series. Just after you subscribed yourself, of course. This episode was written by me, Oliver Eberlei. It was edited by Dario Eberlei. The music was composed by Robert Taubler and Michael Hassemann. And the graphics for the game were created by Jessica Carla. Yeah.